Amen. Good morning. If we could have the adult choir. Adult choir, come on up, please. Amen. Good to have you in church this morning. All right, everyone, let's find a seat. We'll get started. Everybody find a seat. Good to see y'all at church with us this morning. Looks like we have a lot of visitors. We're glad you're here. You need anything, get with the one of the ushers in the back, and they can show you where things are, like restrooms, nursery, anything like that. You just make yourself at home to worship the Lord with us, and we're, get, we're glad you're here. Got a handful of announcements I want to mention this morning. Uh, the Lord's really blessed us. I thank the Lord we got stuff to do around here so if you've got a desire to work for the Lord I'm about to give you a handful of chances where you can get in and serve the Lord a little bit so you hear something you like just jump on in because there's this an invitation to get involved amen uh, coming up next Saturday we'll be doing the cruise in for the teens from 11 to 2 
Uh, if you got a nice car that's fixed up, want to bring it up here, just bring it in. You don't have to sign up for nothing. If you want to help out, get with Miss Heather Mallory. I'm sure she still could use a couple of people to help out with that. But you show up and be a blessing and back the churches. We have that cruise in from 11 to 2 next Saturday. Also, that'll be the when you pick up the stuff for the pasta trays. And this morning is the last chance to buy one of those pasta trays that the youth are selling. So if you're still wanting one, get with Brother Jesse or Miss April. Got to get it this morning, though, and the pickup will be next Saturday for that. Also, the ladies will be having a meeting next, Saturday, uh, next Sunday at church, 4.30 p.m. All ladies, please make, uh, make arrangements to be there for that. And I got the new newsletter out, the, the ladies' newsletter. They do one every month. Got one up here. Uh, a real partial, uh, my wife did her testimony in there this month. I read it. It's really good. So if uh, y'all get a copy, all you ladies that want one, grab one. They're up here. For you to read, they're really, really wonderful. She did a great job. Um, next Sunday is uh, the end of the gun raffle, last chance. So if you're wanting to buy one of the raffle tickets for the gun raffle the youth are doing, uh, get with them and buy one. Next Sunday is the last chance to get one of those. Money's due by then. And also, uh, April 28th, we'll be doing a baby, baby dedication here, the evening service. So if you have a newborn baby, you want to dedicate the Lord, get with Miss Vanessa so that she can get that up, get it as soon as possible so they can get a list of how many things they buy gifts, things like that for the kids. So get with her. If you're wanting that done, I know I got a lot. I'm almost done, I promise. Uh, over here in the same school room, Miss Amanda Hogus's class, they're missing a chair and a desk. Um, trying to figure out who took that. If you took that chair and desk, please bring that back. I, I know I don't even know why we have to say these things, but we do need all the chairs and desks that we have in rooms in case you didn't know. So please don't take those. It is not a giveaway around here, so please bring that back. Amen. And lastly, this one too. Hey, this one's even better. Uh, if you want to do something here at the church and use the gym, rent it out, make sure you go through Miss Vanessa. Had a couple issues, I think, here recently of people double booking things. All that needs to go through Miss Vanessa, not anybody else. Please don't be bugging a pastor or anybody else about that. Make sure you go through her because we do have a lot of stuff scheduled and want to make sure that stuff don't get bu double booked. Amen, amen. All right, I'm done talking, Brother Charles. You can have it. Love you guys. All right, thank you, Brother Jeff. Hope everybody got that. All righty. Well, we welcome you this morning to our service. Thank you, everybody, for coming, especially if you are a visitor. And uh, we have some visitors this morning. We thank you all for coming. We pray that you'll get a blessing out of the service today. All right, let's all take our hymn books. So the uh, church hymnal, a, a good old hymn, Blessed Assurance, 181 in the church hymnal. Let's all stand. of God, born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long.
day long. I like that. All right, let's have a word of prayer. I'm going to ask Brother Joseph coming. Brother Joseph, lead us to the Lord in prayer, brother. All right, it's been requested a song for us to sing, and it all points to a day when Jesus is going to come, and hey, all the sin and sorrow will be gone, and we'll be with the Lord. It's a beautiful hymn, number 63, church hymnal, what a day that will be. Oh, I'm sorry, soul stirring book, got the wrong book. Number 63.
tell you about 7.30 yesterday afternoon, got a phone call from a dear friend of mine that was dying with cancer. 7.30. He ain't there now. He's in glory. Body racked with pain. But now, singing hallelujah. Thank God I'm home. <laughs> Amen. So hey, I'm looking forward to seeing him again one day. And it's going to be good because he won't be riddled with old cancer. But he'll have a glorified body. Hallelujah. What a day that's going to be. Hallelujah. As the old preacher man would say, I felt a little something right there. John chapter number 10, verse 27, the Lord said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, they shall follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. And in verse 29, he says, My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hands. There's a commercial on TV that says you're in good hands with all state. 
If that's the hands you're trusting in this morning, you're in for a letdown. I'm glad I'm in better hands than all state. I'm not in good hands. I'm not in sufficient hands. I'm in the best hand. I'm in the biggest hand. I'm in the broadest hand. I'm in the hand of God this morning. And if God's got me, the devil cannot get me out. Sing that again. Hey, we got, we got pews and song books and steeples and lights and a piano. We might as well have church this morning. Amen. I don't know what y'all come for. I'll come to worship. Amen. Let a rip, choir. visiting with us this morning, there's, there's no such thing around here as a bad time to pray. Jesus said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. It's time we come to church and actually done business with the Father. Amen. You mind the Lord this morning. Grace was a 
Good to see everybody in church this morning. Y'all glad you're saved? Say amen. amen. Don't get worried people getting excited. At least we got something to be excited about. Amen. amen. At the end of the day, it will make a difference. Hallelujah. Appreciate people being obedient this morning. Well, hey, we are glad you're here. If you're visiting with us, I got some folks here today. I, I got so many people here today that mean a lot to me. Uh, it's good to have Brother Casey Daniels, his family. Back, wave at me, Brother Casey. Uh, they up here all the way from Kentucky and visiting with us this weekend. I'm glad they're here. Uh, you will hear from this young fellow right over here in a few minutes, Brother Scott Brand. Uh, he is from Faith Baptist Church over in Roanoke, Alabama. He's going to sing a little bit here in a few minutes. Good to have his wife, Miss Caitlin, with us this morning. And uh, I wouldn't embarrass him for nothing, but there's a, there's a young man Young man about 59 sitting on the back row. He may have done turned 60, I don't know, but he knows who he is, and I sure am glad he's here this morning, known each other about all our lives. And uh, it's just good to be in church. Mm. I was looking around this morning. Uh, some of these guys I grew up with, been around all my life, and I was just sitting there while they were singing, singing, and I was thinking, how many of them we done buried? How many of them we've already buried? And uh, boy, but for the grace of God. Yep. Amen. 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 You say, well, I'm not real blessed. You breathing. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. You Amen. sucking in, blowing out. You doing pretty good. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I don't even know what to do this morning. Good to have you in church. Amen. I, I know one thing. I want Jesse Ray Bush to stand up right there in front of everybody. Everybody, look at Jesse Ray. Today is his birthday. Amen. 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 Paul, you probably won't believe this. That's Roger Bush's baby boy right there. Apple didn't fall far from the tree. Amen. And he's proud of it. He's back there, yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. I love you, Jess. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Anybody else have a birthday this week? Alex. Alex, where are you at? Is he behind me? Happy birthday. He's like, who y'all pointing at? 
Happy birthday, sister. How, good morning. Hey, stand up. Let's give her a hand. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday. Amen. You get our age, we'll let you stand up and we'll give you a hand too. <laughs> when you're that age, birthdays just come like, you know. Anyway, hallelujah. Happy birthday, guys. Oh, let's see what else. Let's have our ushers. You men come. We'll receive this morning's offering. Thankful for the Lord's hand getting our children home last night. We had some, uh, some air, not air conditioning, air brake issues on the bus last night. It kept locking down and losing air, and, and uh, they just had to kind of limp it in, got in late last night, but I'm glad the Lord got them home. Amen. Had a great, great meeting. Uh, all I've heard this morning is what Charlie Clark, Clark preached, what Charlie Clark preached. Uh, y'all hurting for some preaching, I'm telling you. I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. Charlie Clark's my friend. And uh, I, it was what a message I heard about this morning. But thank the Lord for the work he's done in the hearts of our kids. Amen. Oh, uh, anyway, let's bow our heads. Uh, as we pray today, let's continue to pray for Brother Spartan Atkins and his wife, Miss Brenda. Please lift them up this morning. But also their housekeeper, Miss Esther. She's been here to church. And, uh, she's battling with cancer. Please pray for Miss Esther this morning, if you would. All right. So, uh, but let's go to the Lord in prayer and uh, just ask the Lord to have his way here this morning. And uh, ask the Lord to have his way in your heart this morning. Amen. Brother Tommy, you pray. Lord, I sure do want to thank you, Lord, for another day to be able to bow in your presence. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you love old sinners. Thank you, Lord, that you love old sinners, Lord, that uh, didn't deserve nothing you gave us. Lord, we sure don't deserve, Lord, your mercy and your grace. But Lord, I sure am thankful. Lord, I sure am thankful, Lord, that you love us in spite of everything we do. Lord, I sure am glad that you love us, Lord, when we mess up. I'm glad you love us, Lord, like nobody can ever love us like you. Lord, I sure am thankful. Lord, I pray that you'd be with Brother Spartan and his wife, Lord. Father, I pray, Lord, that you'd just encourage them this morning, Lord, that you'd give them just what they need. Lord, I pray, Father, that you'd be with Esther, Lord, and Lord, you know all that she's going through, Lord, with this cancer, Lord, and I pray, Father, that you'd just touch her in a mighty way. Lord, I pray, Father, that you'd bless each and every one we're bowed with this morning. Lord, there may be somebody here that don't know you. I pray they know you before they leave today. Lord, they'll never regret, never, ever, ever regret coming to know you. Lord, there's a lot of things in life we regret, but that's one thing I've never regretted, Lord. And I'm so thankful, Lord, that you'd have mercy. Well, just bless our time together, Lord. I pray, Father, that you're blessing the singing. Lord, you've already been blessing it. I pray, Lord, that you just continue, Lord, and touch our pastor, Lord, and use him in a mighty way this morning, Lord. I pray, Father, that you just remove everything, every hindrance around from him, Lord. And Lord, just let him preach. Lord, we'll thank you, Lord, for everything you do for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, listen, before they take up the offering... Uh, I forgot something, which I normally do. Uh, every month, our ladies give a couple of baskets out to a couple of outstanding ladies in our church. And uh, this morning, uh, Miss Ashley has uh, truly picked some good ones. And uh, we just want to recognize them this morning, if I can find them. Miss Rebecca Whitener. And, uh, hey. Miss Maddie Freeman. Hey, Amen. Go ahead, fellas. Hey, Brother Tommy.
somebody's hand, tell them it's good to see them in church this morning.
Amen. Let's get us a seat this morning. Appreciate the good time of fellowship. Let's find a seat. Listen, on, our, on the kids' way up to North Carolina Friday to the youth rally, uh, they stopped and ate at a Wendy's. Wendy's. And uh, I got a little video on my phone. The kids got to singing in the Wendy's. And uh, an employee in Wendy's, a young man, got saved. Amen. Ain't that something? Amen. He wanted to quit his job and get on the bus and go with the kids. Amen. <laughs> What a blessing. Well, I'm going to introduce him again. This is, this is Brother Scott Brand. And uh, over the last few years, the Lord's just kind of knit our hearts together. And uh, we've uh, talked several times about him coming, and, and it just worked out. And so glad he's here today. He's my friend. And uh, I want to tell him publicly I appreciate him I supporting you, his pastor. That, that means a lot, a lot to me. Uh, Friday, uh, now Brother Scott goes to church with Brother Scott Whaley over at Faith and Roanoke. That's where Brother Dennis and uh, Miss Donna Hollis go. Uh, Levi and I went over Friday and spent spent quite a few hours with Brother Dennis. Actually, uh, I don't know if I've told the church about it or not, but uh, Brother Dennis now has a nurse that comes in every day and sits with him and. And uh, now, now Friday, while we sat with him, he was great. Uh, I mean, we just we spent a lot of time. His mind was just as clear. But uh, but he told me and Levi, he said it will it will go my mind. And uh, so y'all, that's a friend, a dear dear friend. Ain't no telling how many chapel services he preached right here. No, no telling. But uh, y'all remember, y'all remember Brother Dennis Hollis. But anyway, Brother Scott goes to church with them, and and uh, they go to church about like we do. They just they just love the Lord, and uh, Brother Scott, I tease him about being famous, and uh, he really kind of is. Uh, he's sung with some pretty big, pretty big crowds over the years, and uh, it's just a just a blessing to see him just serving the Lord. Amen. Oh. Uh, Appreciate his wife, Caitlin. Appreciate them being here. And uh, they put on the uh, the citywide revival this past week where I preached on Wednesday. Thank you, Brother Freddie, for preaching for us. But, uh, we, uh, they, I think there was like five churches represented. Had a young man get saved Wednesday night. And, and uh, just uh, the city, the city has asked them to do it again next year and to kick it off with a sunrise service. So I thought, you know, what a blessing. What a blessing. God's not done. God's not done by a million miles. You say, how do you know? We're still here. Yes, Amen. sir. My well, brother yes, Scott's going to sing for us this morning. The altar's already been full. You mind the Lord. Whatever it is you need this morning, chances are somebody will meet you right here and pray with you. You may not be saved. We'll take a Bible and show you how you can get that settled before you leave today. Brother Scott... You mind the Lord, my friend. I'm glad you're here. Love you, buddy. As I walked through the door, I sensed his presence. And I knew this was a place where love Jehovah God still abides here. And we are standing in His presence on holy ground. Now in presence there is joy beyond all measure 
on holy ground. Everybody stand. Everybody stand and say, we are standing on holy ground. On I know Let me try. 
came on Some call it thankful this morning, church, that I call it home. Someone said that you Scott, if you know, Brother Scott, do you mind just staying right there? We do stuff like this around here, so just just hang loose. You can just play if you want to. I didn't come to preach on heaven this morning, but I didn't come not to either. I'm gonna say it again. I, I didn't come to preach on heaven, but I sure didn't come not to. I come in, Brother Charles, right out of the gate when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land. What a day, glorious day that will be. Then that choir stood up here and sang about the banks of the promised land. And Brother Scott started singing about heaven. I just thought I might just go ahead and preach a minute right here. If y'all all all right, I might do it whether you all right or not. Doesn't make a whole lot of difference to me, but John chapter number 14, if you got your Bible. John chapter number 14. Talk about heaven a minute this morning. Can you talk about it too much? 
course not. Of course not. Some of y'all, some of y'all been on cruises. Some of y'all going on cruises. That's all I've heard around here for six weeks. Cruise this, cruise that, cruise this, cruise that. I don't hear nothing else till you send me on one. Somebody say amen right there. Quit telling me about your trip. Share the love. Amen. What I'm trying to say is we get excited about somewhere we're going. I'm going to say it again. We get excited about somewhere we're going. And you should. If you're going to heaven this morning, you ought to be fired up. That kind of singing. How many of you got somebody over there? I'm talking about a loved one that's already beat you there. There, No doubt in your mind, that's where they are this morning. That, that kind of singing ought to excite us. Not put fear in you. If, it's, if it puts fear in you about the fact of heaven, then we can replace that fear with joy, unspeakable, and full of glory before you walk out these doors this morning. Heaven's not a scary place. Hell is a scary place. We'll say it again. Heaven's not a scary place, but the alternative is. Are y'all all right? We shouldn't get nervous when we talk about heaven. We ought to get antsy. We ought to get excited. We ought to get, are y'all listening? John chapter number 14, the Bible said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. Whither I go, you know, and the way you know. And Thomas saith unto him, unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? And Jesus saith unto him, I am the way. I am the way the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Verse number six, Jesus said, I am the way. The way what? The way to heaven. The way to heaven. Well, listen, we're living in a society, Brother Scott, that would try to convince you that there are many ways and there are many avenues. And it doesn't matter which one you pick as long as you pick one. Now listen to me, y'all reason with me. I didn't come to make anybody mad this morning, but that don't make a lick of sense. None. None. How many of you know where Cartersville is? Y'all know where Cartersville, Georgia is? There's, 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 there's a couple ways to get there. But I can't just pick any old way. If I get on 61 North that way, head toward Dallas, keep going through Dallas, go all the way up through Burnt Hickory, I'm gonna wind up in the town of Cartersville, Georgia. Why? Because I went the right way. But if I get on 61 South, no matter what I believe, somebody say, where are you going? I'm going to Cartersville. Well, you can't go to Cartersville that way. I can if I believe it, right? I'm sorry that sign ain't gonna say welcome to Cartersville, it's gonna say welcome to Carrollton. Yeah. Are y'all all right? I must go the right way. How many of you would like to know for a fact, or maybe you already do, you're going to heaven when you die. If you can really know, wouldn't you like to know the way? Jesus said, I am the way. Buddha's not the way. Muhammad is not the way. Confucius is not the way. Jesus said, I am the way. But he doesn't stop there. He carries on a little bit and he said, and, and I am the way and by the way, no man, none, 
None cometh unto the Father but by me. One mediator between God and man, and that is the man Christ Jesus. What I'm trying to tell you is there ain't no way around him. There ain't no way over him. There ain't no way under him. You must come through. You must come through the Lord Jesus Christ. You can flip over to Revelations 21 if you want to. Now, I just want to say to you this morning, I believe in heaven. I mean, make no bones about it. I believe it. I believe it's as real as the faces I'm looking at, probably more real. Because some of y'all fake as a day is long. Amen. I smile while I said it. Amen. You say, how do you know there's people in here that's fake? We're at church. <laughs> it got quiet, didn't it? Is that Sanford's son, really? <laughs> Got a Sanford sound down here on the cell phone, on the ringtone. I, I like that. Perfect time. Dummy, <laughs> dummy. <laughs> Lost my whole train of thought. Thank you. I believe in heaven. I don't think it's a myth. Yes, sir. I don't think it's a figment of my imagination. I don't think it's a crutch that the Christian leans on. I'm going to say that again. I don't think it's a crutch that the Christian leans on. This world to tell you you can go ever which way and you'll wind up there as long as you have the right yes, sir. attitude about it or the right whatever. Somebody say, oh, I wish it was that way. Do you really? That'd be really confusing, wouldn't it? I'm glad there's just one way. That leaves me with nothing to figure out. Yes, sir, buddy. When the Lord said, I am the way, the truth, and the light, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me, I'm in. Amen. I mean, all I got to do is whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's it. I'm in. I ain't got to take no test. I ain't got to pass nothing. I ain't got to come from a certain family or a certain bloodline or, oh, well, I believe in, I believe in heaven, why? Because I have it on good authority. I have the authority of the scriptures. The authority of the scriptures. We find heaven and scenes in heaven from way back here in the Old Testament all the way to the very end of the book of the Revelation. Isaiah saw it. Isaiah saw the very throne of God and saw God sitting on the throne. Said he was high and lifted up and his train behind him filled the temple. Y'all remember that? Heaven. You can find it all through the Bible. But I believe in heaven because of the authority of the scriptures. By the way, I do believe and submit to the authority of the scriptures. Hmm. Well, then we have it on the authority of the Savior himself. We just read it. Then we have it on the authority of the Holy Spirit. You say, what are you talking about? There's something when he sings, some call it heaven, but I call it home. Something in my heart does a somersault. Yeah, boy, that's right. That's right. He gets to that one little line where he said, some call it dreaming. <laughs> well, just let me dream on. That's my favorite part of the whole thing. If it's dreaming, don't wake me up. If I'm living in la-la land, I like it in la-la land. If, 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 if heaven is a dream, do not wake me up. Yes, amen. Like that country song I heard, the old man curled up, homeless. The fellow wakes him up to check on him. He said, man, what'd you fooling me for? I was almost home. <laughs> yes, sir, brother. If heaven's a dream, just let me dream on. Amen, brother. But heaven's not a dream. Heaven is a reality. When he sings those songs, when, he, when we sing, when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land, there was something inside me, Brother Charles, going, yes. Yes, 
Yes. yes, it was my spirit bearing witness with that spirit. Yes, sir. Y'all understand that kind of language? Y'all know what I'm talking about. When you hear something that ain't right, something inside you of you says, that ain't right. That ain't right. But if you're a child of God and when you hear something that is of God, there's something inside you that says, uh-huh. Yes, sir. <laughs> there's a little small, small, still voice in there that says, hey, you can say amen right there. You can carry that to the bank. Yes, sir, buddy. Amen. <laughs> Heaven. Well, can I tell you three things about it? Now I'm going to let him sing some more. I'm going to tell you three things about heaven. Revelation chapter number 21. It's a big place. Yeah. It's a big place. Yeah, come on now. You say, how you know? Well, I, got, I ain't never been there, but I got the travel brochure laying right here in front of me. <laughs> Amen. Tells all about it. Heaven is a big place place. I was trying to witness to a man one day, Brother, Brother Todd, and, and I give him that for whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord. He said, wait a minute, wait a minute. You, you telling me anybody that wants to be saved can be saved? I said, that's what I'm telling you. He said, wait a minute now. You telling me anybody that wants to be saved can be saved? And then when we die, we all go into heaven? I said, yeah. He said, no way. No way heaven's big enough. Well, you don't know what size you'll be when you get there. Some of y'all may be taking up more room right now than you will in heaven. <laughs> well, I resemble that remark. <laughs> might, might be a little more compact when we get, come on, can I get a witness? I could have left that alone, couldn't I? It's a big place. I'm talking about heaven. I'm talking about home. Look at verse number 16, Revelation chapter number 21. John is describing this thing. He said, in the city lieth four square, and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with a reed, 12,000 furlongs. The length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. He said, that don't mean a whole lot to me. Let, me, let me. let me help it make sense. I said heaven's a big place. It is 1,322 miles. 1,322 miles. That away. That away. That away. That away. That away. And that away. I don't know how many square foot that is, but that's a heap of them. Are y'all listening? 1,322 miles in every direction. It's a big place. What are you saying? There's room for you. Yeah, boy. There's room for you. I'm going to say it again. There's room for you. <laughs> I got a feeling heaven ain't going to be crowded. You say, what's it going to be? Just right. It's going to be just right. We're going to be like Little Red Riding Hood. This is just right. It's going to be beyond just right. It's going to be perfect. Heaven is a big place. I don't know about you, but I don't want to miss it. Yes, amen. He said, well, we got plenty of time, do we? I hope so. But you don't know. You ain't promised tomorrow. That's why the Bible said... Today is the day of salvation. Heaven's a big place. I get hit with every kind of weird question in the world. If heaven's so big and there's so many people, how will I ever find my loved one? Don't worry about it. Don't worry. I don't think you're going to have to hunt nobody. I mean, I got my own crazy ideas and you do not want to hear them. I don't even want to hear them. Because I listen to me and go, you're out of your thinking mind. I got a wild imagination. You really want to get blown away? Get me and him together sharing our ideas. <laughs> We're both out there, amen. Hey, but you might be surprised. You might be surprised. Don't worry about it being too crowded. Don't worry about not being able to find anybody. Russ Scott, the one I'm looking for, I don't think I'm going to have a hard time finding him. 
When I get there, the one I want to see, I don't think I'll have to fight through a crowd. I don't think, are you listening? I don't think I'll have to look in a directory somewhere. I don't think I'll need a picture so I'll know him when I see him. I believe when I see Jesus, I'll know that's who he is. I won't even need an introduction, especially when I hear his voice. Brother Scott played the video Wednesday night of Brother David Gibbs, that story. Some of y'all have heard Dr. Gibbs tell that story about being on the airplane, the little twin engine plane, and the pilot flaked out, passed out, and he had to fly the plane. And I I love Brother Gibbs, but I'm just telling you, he ain't no pilot. (laughs) He's a lawyer at best and a professional eater. He is no pilot. And finally, they got on the radio, Mayday, Mayday. And the guy on the other end basically said, just listen to my voice and I'll get you home. Just listen to my voice until that plane touches down. And I'll, if you'll do what I say. He said, when they got to the airport, all the news and everybody was there, this emergency landing. He said, walking through the airplane, airport. And he heard that. He, he said, no, I didn't need an introduction. He said, that was the voice that got me home. (laughs) When I get to heaven, it ain't going to matter how big it is. He's going to be the star attraction. I believe he'll be right smack dab in the middle. I believe he'll be in the middle of everything, over everything. Amen. Heaven. Heaven is a a big place. 1,322 miles in every direction. That is the distance from Boston to... Massachusetts, I can't even say it. It's a good thing I don't live there, amen. That's the distance from Boston, Massachusetts all the way to Miami, Florida. Imagine that in every direction. It's a big place. Well, can I give you another description? Not only is heaven a big place, it's a beautiful place. It's a beautiful place. My wife and I have been able to travel some. The Lord's blessed us. We had a couple uh, dear friends of ours back quite a few years ago took us to Hawaii. We've been to Hawaii. We've been out west and seen the Grand Teton Mountains. Just a few weeks ago, we were in Northern California and saw the giant sequoias. And we were down in Big Sur, Brother Randy, and and saw the ocean, the the mountains just run into the sea. And it, it was just amazing. And we look at those sites, Brother Freddie, and often we stand there just in awe. I've I, I seen them trees on TV my whole life. When I seen it, I, I mean, it's just wood. I, I ain't no tree hugger. You couldn't hug one of them if you wanted to. Yeah, it'd take 10 or 15 of you. 130-something foot around it. But I just stood there. I didn't even know what to say. Things over 2,000 years old. It's a possibility it was on the earth when Jesus was. And I'm standing there looking at things. I'm just dumbfounded. And that's cursed. That's cursed. I stood at the foot of the Grand Teton Mountains between Yellowstone and Jackson Hole, Wyoming. As a veteran pulled up on a Harley with his wife on the back. He had on a hat, Vietnam veteran. And I went over and shook his hand, thanking him for his service. His wife then walked over there to the fence and standing there staring at that mountain. I walked up behind her and I said, what do you think, sis? She turned around and said, I don't know me from Adam. She put both thumbs in there and she said, yay, God. <laughs> you can't deny him. His hand prints all over his thumb. Yes, sir. But we stand and we look at the earth's wonders and its beauty, and it is. I saw Niagara Falls frozen. Frozen. I'm talking about icicles bigger than the steeple on top of this building. I, I, ain't, I ain't exaggerating. I've seen some things that just blow my mind. But in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, that's messed up. I'm going to something 
I'm going to a place that ain't messed up that ain't never been touched by the mark of sin. Amen, that Satan hadn't left his dirty thumbprint on. Hey, I'm going to a place that is perfect. Mm. You say, what's that got to do with anything? Everything, if you ain't going. Yes, sir. <laughs> Amen, it's a beautiful place in verse number 18. The Bible said the building of the wall of it was pure jasper, or was of jasper, and, and the city was pure gold like unto clear glass. Did you know scientists didn't figure out till not very too many years ago that gold in its purest form is not gold? Gold in its purest form is transparent. Hmm. Somebody knew it way back here. I think somebody who knew it who saw it Gold like unto clear glass. Wow. The foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third chalcedony, if I said it right, the fourth an emerald, the fifth a sardis, the sixth a sardonyx, the sixth a sardis, the seventh a crystallite, the eighth a barrel, the ninth the topaz, the tenth, whatever that one is, the eleventh, adjacent, the twelfth, an amethyst. And the twelve gates were gates or, or twelve pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl in the city, or the street of the city was pure gold as it was transparent glass. And I saw no temple therein. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb or the temple of it. The city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb was the light thereof. Heaven's not just a big place, it's a beautiful place. And what makes it the most beautiful of all? It's not the walls of Jasper. I can't wait to see them. It's not the gates of pearl. It's not the street of pure gold. Can you imagine that? What this world has such a fit over, we're going to walk on. What we hold of highest value, heaven paves the streets with. I'm excited about it. I'm excited about the river of life. I'm excited about the tree bearing 12 manner of fruit. I'm, I'm excited about the cherubims and the seraphims. I'm excited. I'm excited about all that, grandma and grandpa and aunts and uncles. And I'm excited. But the thing that's going to make heaven the most beautiful of all is our Savior will be there. The one who suffered and bled and died. You say, what do you think he's going to look like? Got a feeling he's going to look like he did when he left here. I believe we'll be able to see them scars. Would it be something if he let us do like Thomas? He said, hey, Brother Jack, just in case you've ever wondered, come here. Did you, did you feel this? Maybe that ain't a big deal to you, but when you realize he did every bit of it for you, Yes, sir. Yes, I believe we'll, I don't know how it's all going to work, Brother Todd, but I do believe we'll know as we were known. I had a man all tore up just here not long ago. He, his wife died and he remarried. He said, what in the world am I going to do when I get to heaven? Well, both of them. <laughs> I said, sir, you bring up a very good point. Find out which end of heaven they own, you go the other. Amen. <laughs> I mean, he's really distraught. How, how am I going? How, which one do I go to supper with? You know, I, he, he was tore all to pieces. I don't think it's going to be like it. We can spend our days trying to figure it out. The choir said it best this morning. The half hasn't been told. Amen. You say, well, I think heaven's this and I think heaven's that. And, and 
anything beyond your wildest imagination. I don't think there's a cabin in the corner of heaven and we're going to dangle our feet and I, I don't believe all that. Uh, we can get a cabin in Gatlinburg. I believe it's more than that. Amen. It's a beautiful place. And I can't wait to see it. The Apostle Paul said, I hath not seen, ear hath not heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man. We have no clue. The Lord said it was a city not made with hands whose builder and maker is God. If you've seen the Grand Tetons or the Great Waterfalls in Hawaii or, or any of those beautiful, beautiful sights, the big redwoods or what, whatever, whatever it is you may have seen, you need to understand something. The same one that made heaven made that. But what he made here got messed up. Mm. Well, it's a big place. It's a beautiful place. Russ Scott's going to sing a little bit more in a second, but let me just tell you this third thing. It's a blessed place. Yes, it is. It's a blessed place. Verse number three and four of Revelations 21. John said, I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. I love verse number four. Brother Jackie said, God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more, somebody say it with me, death. Death. Brother Bo and Miss Tricia, I think they done, they done gone. They had to leave and go to a funeral. The old preacher that married them. I met him out here at the car show here the year before last, our first one, I think. Old man of God married them. He went home to be with the Lord. They gone to his funeral. Brother Charles will have a funeral. Uh, probably Brother Chris Field sometime this week. Uh, we have funerals all the time. One of these days, that'll be over. Yes, amen. Yes, sir. Somebody said, our funeral directors go into heaven uh, if they're saved, but they won't have a job. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> amen. I've always pictured in my mind the biggest junkyard in the world being right outside the gates of glory. Wheelchairs, eyeglasses, false teeth. Amen. I get to heaven, there'll probably be some of y'all's teeth sitting in that pile going. Da, 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 da. I know they don't stop when you take them out. Amen. I, I'm, I'm done, seriously. Quite a few years ago, there was a young lady. I can't talk about heaven without talking about her. She rode our bus to church. Everybody thought she was kid. When she died, she was in her late 20s. She might have already been 30. She was, she was close. Her name was Wanda. Wanda was born with spinal bifida. Her spine was on the outside of her body. Little Wanda lived her life in a wheelchair. And it didn't matter what we was doing, she had to be there. I carried that young and I ain't no telling. But Brother Freddy, I aggravated her. Oh, I would push her somewhere in her wheelchair and leave her. I, would, I, just, I just push her in the back parking lot of the church over yonder in Dallas. I just push her around there and said, I see you have church. I just leave her sitting there and she starts screaming. Eddie White, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> Most people call me pastor, preacher, or brother Eddie, but not one. You know what she always said, Brother Carl? You know the first thing I'm going to do when we get to heaven? I'd say, what, one? Y'all, y'all, forgive me, okay? She'd say, I'm going to kick your B-U-T-T. -T. <laughs> you know what she's saying? She said, I'm going to kick your rear end. Except she said, but. Now, I did too. Hey, wait. <laughs> You see, she didn't have legs. She didn't have legs that worked. And she said, when I get to heaven, I'm going to have two good legs. 
She said, and I'm going to use both of them to kick your rear end. Amen. <laughs> Woo! Boy, I can't wait. I can imagine her right now skipping down the streets of glory, praising the name of the Lamb of God for it. <laughs> Heaven. It's a big place. It's a beautiful place. It's a blessed place. I got a little grandbaby there. I never got to see. I can't help believe, but I'm afraid the Lord let me hold her. The man that led me to Christ, he's there. One of the dearest people I ever knew in his lifetime, they're there. If my granny ain't there, ain't none of y'all going. <laughs> Friends, my age. Yeah, boy. Heaven. Can you sing a little more about it, Brother Scott? If you got another heaven song, sing it. Whatever you want to do, let's stand our feet this morning. Brother Scott's going to sing some more. We ain't no hurry. Once you find your place in this altar and get Some that thing settled, get it settled heaven. about where you'll spend your time. But I call upon some call it tree. Could we just bow our heads this morning? Ain't nobody looking around. I'm not going to ask you to do anything for me. I want you to ask, I want to ask you to do something for your family. Heads are bowed and eyes closed. Ain't nobody looking around. We just lean over. Tell your husband, your wife, your son, your daughter, your mom, your dad, your friend, whoever you're here with today. If you're if you're saved. Would you just lean over and tell them, say, hey, if something happens to me, I just want you to know, heaven's my home. Could you do that? Have they heard? Do they know? Why don't you tell them while Brother Scott sings? Let them know. Yes. If you can't do that, why don't you get that settled today? Why would you leave not knowing? I ain't trying to get you to join the church or give an offer, and I just want you to know you're going to heaven. When you die, would you tell somebody? Go ahead, Brother Scott. Let's sing a little more. How about it this morning? So, so that you can go back home again. For things will. As good as they've been, I've got good news for you. When heaven comes into view, one glimpse What do you call it? But I call it home. And some call it dreaming. Oh, 
Just let me dream on. Oh, but let, let me dream on. Some call it thinking brother Todd while brother Scott was singing for most of my life when when it's mentioned it's it's heaven I mean you know what's what's that way heaven what's that way hell it's heaven and hell but I never thought about it till brother Scott was just singing just now I don't know how many dozens and dozens of times I've been in a hospital or in a living room where a loved one was brought home on hospice. I don't know how many times we've heard them talk about leaving. Brother Freddie, I don't know if I've ever had somebody say, I just want to go to heaven. I don't know if I've ever had one say that. Brother Charles, I remember when your little mother was dying, Miss Kathleen, right over in Rock Mart. She laying in her bed, and I sat down on the edge of the bed, and I had prayer with her, and then she told me to come there, and I leaned over, and she grabbed my face. Smashed my face up, pulled my face right down to hers. Big old tears run down her face, and she said, I just want to go home. I knew what she meant. I said, Miss Kathleen, you are home. I want to go home. All of a sudden, it's not just a place. It's not just a place that has a name. You know, I live right down the road. I travel a whole lot. My favorite thing about traveling is coming home. When somebody says, where are you headed when you're leaving here? I don't say 1388 Sweetwater Bend. I say home because that's home. Yes, sir. Heaven, yes, but it's home. I'm headed home. Mm. If y'all tired, you can sit down. Sing, sing some more, brother Scott. Sing another one. Whatever you want to do. Let's just enjoy the Lord this morning. Maybe, maybe. I'm telling you, I didn't order this service. It ain't, it, I didn't have nothing to do with it. I just showed up. I told you I didn't come to preach on heaven, but I didn't come not to. Maybe it'd be a good time while Brother Scott sings. Why don't you lean over and ask your family? If they didn't lean over and tell you, lean over and ask them why. You say, well, that's rude. It'd be the rudest thing you have ever done not to. That's your family. People you're supposed to love and care about. Wouldn't hurt nothing. Say, hey, why didn't you tell me you was going to heaven when you die? Do we need to go pray? Get it settled. Go ahead, Brother Scott. Boy, it's been good, hasn't it? It's been mighty good. I've got two songs. Can I do two songs? Yes, you can. I was uh, born and raised in Limeville. Alabama. I mean, you know where Lionville, Alabama is. There's a few of you. When I was growing up on Wednesday night, there was a Southern Gospel show that used to come on the radio at 6 o'clock sharp. And I used to have to take and record the radio station. How many remember when you had to record the radio station on a cassette tape? Raise your hand. There's some older people in the room today. I had to record the first two hours because I was at church. But it never failed. They start the program with this song. I didn't know who the lady was. But I could tell she was having a good time. And later on in my career, I got to meet her and know her. 
And she forevermore believed every word that she sang. She didn't just sing this music. She's tried to live this music. I like some of the new music that's coming out. I do. But nothing beats some of that old lyrics. There might be someone here this morning that need to hear these old lyrics. Every Wednesday night, it would start like this. Life is easy. When you're up on the mountain And you've got peace of mind You've never known, but then things change, and they do. And you're down in the valley. Don't lose faith, child. Oh, you're never alone. For the God on the mountain is still God in the valley. When things go heard one lyric I've sang, know this, the God of the day 
is still God in the night. Here's a true story. The same man that wrote, I call it home, wrote this next song. It's a true story about a 19-year-old boy that was still living at home with a praying mother. Raise your hand if you had a praising mother. Aren't you thankful for that praying mother? You might not be here this morning if it wasn't for that praying mother. 19-year-old still living there. Like some 19-year-olds, he was like that. He got into the world carousing and partying and drugs with his friends. She'd beg him, son, please give your life to Jesus. He's the answer. He's what you're searching for. He said this. He said that it never failed, that every time he came home at 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning, when he went down the hall to get to his room on the right, before he got to his room on the right, her room was on the left. He said it never failed, Brother Eddie. When he walked past that room, he could hear her screaming, God, save that boy. God, save that boy. And she'd beg him to go to church. She'd beg him to turn around his life and give his life to Jesus. And like some 19-year-olds, he got tired of hearing that same old thing over and over. He said he got to the point one time that he said he was going to get on his motorcycle and drive just as far away from home as he could. And he said the further he got away from home, the louder he heard his mama pray. He said it got so loud to a point that he had to pull over that motorcycle said, I laid it right on the road and made an altar. He said, on a country road, I asked God to save my life. He said he got back on that motorcycle and tried to find the nearest payphone he could find. Now, there's a few of you that don't know what a payphone is. I'll get with you after the service. But we all know who is going to call. And when the phone rang in Newton, West Virginia, he said, Hello, Mama. I just called to tell you All those prayers that you prayed for me, they were not in vain. Something happened tonight. While traveling down this whole country road, I thought that you should be the first to know that I am not the same. Now all
mama, you can sleep tonight. For I found Jesus. Now everything's alright. Oh, and I remember, I do remember this. Hear you ask the Lord my soul to keep that I might find the way. Oh, and I'm so thankful, yes, I am, that through all of my loneliness and all those wasted years Mama your prayers kept bringing in my ear every night and day now all those trees good hallelujah yes ma'am hallelujah hallelujah that's one of my favorite songs because it's not just a song to me that's reality I grew up with a praying mama amen brother Scott thank you thank you Miss Caitlin thank y'all for coming I know it probably wasn't your norm. I, I didn't mean I didn't mean to interrupt you and I just man, I'm telling you. You have to come back. If you'll come back, I won't bother you. Well, I won't I won't I, and I have to say this. I can't I have promise to say that. this right quick. I love your pastor. Okay. Uh, and, and 
And I truly mean this from the bottom of my heart. He is a grade A certified nut. <laughs> I, but I met Guilty. his mother this morning, and he don't know this. I met your mother this morning, and she said this. I walked up to her and said, I want you to know he's my favorite pastor that comes to Faith Baptist Church. And I've told you that. And she looked at me and said, you must go to a little church that don't have a lot of preachers come in. <laughs> To which I said, the apple didn't fall far from that's the tree. My, that's, that's, <laughs> Thank you for letting me come. I love you. That's my mama. <laughs> She's hilarious. Love you too. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Brother Scott, I, seriously, he we we will have him back. Uh, he has a tape table in the hallway. Uh, he's got some good CDs, got some good songs, and I promise he knows more than four songs. Uh, uh, <laughs> He really does. But I listen, and I knew when he came here, he came to worship. Yes, sir. If I thought he came for something else, I wouldn't have him come. That's right, that's right. He wants God to have his way. Yes, sir. And that's all I want. We don't, yes, we don't care. It, it don't matter, man. Yes, Just sir. amen. But if you enjoyed that this morning, go by the table and let them know. Let them know you appreciate them. Amen. And uh, get you some good music to play while you're going down the road. I don't know. I know he's got CDs. I don't know if he's got them thumb things or not. But anyway, he does. He does. So uh, go back there and check that out, all right? Uh, prayer room at 530. Church starts at 6 o'clock tonight. You be here, Lord willing. The young people be singing tonight. So uh, be ready, all right? Let's bow our heads all over the house. Brother Casey, would you pray and dismiss us, preacher?